Good evening. Hare Krishna, spiritual warriors. Welcome to our spiritual warriorship classes. Mother and Trini here. Thankfully, I'm able to be here tonight. And I'm thankful for all of you who are here tonight. Um, we are reading, as you know, from the books of His Holiness Bhakti Tirta Swami. Spiritual warrior books are what we have been reading and sharing and discussing for over a year. It was a year in November. And now, but this time, we are in Spiritual Warrior 6. That's the last book of the Spiritual Warrior series. And remember, the books can be purchased at Krishna.com. They're wonderful books. Those who have been with us for a while sure have found what you have heard very helpful. And hopefully you're getting, adding them to your library. So we're in Spiritual Warrior 6, Beyond Fanaticism, Terrorism, and War. Discover the Peace Solution. Quite a title. And we have been reading chapter one about the phenomenon of evil, and we're in chapter two, which I found quite profound. I keep reading over, and tonight we're gonna do a review <laughs> with some points that I feel are important. But I wanna ask a question. First of all, my technician here, how many are in the chat room? Are there any in the chat room right Two now? Two people. Two people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are they familiar? To mm -hmm. you? Okay. Brenda Lee and Bhakti and Carol. Okay. I, whoever's in the chat room now, if you're chatting, that means you're on and typing. If you were here last week, I'm asking you to please Tell me of one area, aspect, word, sentence that you may have remembered from the chapter on why do we suffer. Am I clear? Can you do that for me, please? Spiritual warrior, you're on the battlefield. <laughs> Brenda, another warrior speak asking for your help. Brenda Lee says she wasn't here. Okay. Was she here for the chapter before? For any of this new spiritual warrior book? How about Bhakti and Carol? Is she responding? Because her computer's been down. Uh, back to, uh, Brenda Lee. Oh, hers been down? Mm -hmm. Welcome back, Brenda Lee. I missed you. Okay, what we'll do, we'll go through this and maybe I'll come back before we close to see if anything we're getting that we're grasping or can remember or want to work on. This is chapter two titled, Why Do We Suffer? And how Bhakti Tirta Swami, he opens the chapter by reminding us as spiritual warriors that coming to the platform of love of God is a process and that the Lord has no favorites. And he then goes on that, you know, if the Lord is has no favorites and he's equal to all and to everyone and yet at the same time we see and experience so much suffering in the world which may make us wonder about the nature of God's kindness and some may even begin to doubt his kindness but we do question 
and we do question the reason for suffering at different times. Even a devotee may begin to say, wonder why I go through all these austerities just to suffer intensely as a servant of God. But he tells us that we sh should really think about this topic of suffering from time to time. Because if not, when we go through difficulties without understanding their deeper purpose, we can lose faith and decide to renounce the service of God. So when he says you look at this subject from time to time, means you look and you study, you, you question, you look and then you study, and you look at your spiritual life and you hear from the acharyas, the ancient teachers, and ancient scriptures, and to get a deeper understanding of the purpose for all things. So, and if we don't take that approach, we might then resort to unhealthy shelters. And we may even feel that the um, price we have to pay to reach the goal is not worth the ultimate result. But he tells us suffering has a reason. And he takes us back to the Bhagavad Gita. I hope you all, whoever's there, has read the Bhagavad Gita as it is by uh, Srila Prabhupada and will continue to read and study. And if not, I know for sure you go to Krishna.com, it's there in ebook. You don't even have to buy it at this time. If not, you can do ebook. They also have uh, ebook classes now. You can sign up and interact with others in studying this wonderful, wonderful book. But it tells us that this material world is very difficult to overcome. And is what? It's full of misery. So that's not news to any of you. But the Lord can help us if we surrender to his help. This is the quote from chapter 8, text 16, Bhagavad Gita. It states that from the highest planet in the material world, down to the lowest, all are places of misery, wherein repeated birth and death take place. But one who attains my abode, this is the Lord speaking, never takes birth again. So that possibility, that was my attraction when I read Srila Prabhupada and my teacher Bhakti Tirtha Swami spoke. First I heard from Bhakti Tirtha Swami that the phrase he used that you can see God face to face this lifetime. I didn't quite understand it, but something inside of me did because the tears started rolling down my cheeks. And the only thing I said was, my soul is hearing what it wants to hear. And that I was pleased with. So I continued studying, of course, and reading and hearing and chanting. But that's, that's what um, we must remember that this is a place. And that if we do the proper study and follow the sudden and the practice, spiritual practices, we can end the cycle of births and death. That's pretty powerful. Every time, if you stop and think of what you've been going through in this lifetime, you want to come back and do it again if possible. So he tells us that in spite of our endeavor to serve the Lord, we must deal with the material energy because we're in it. Nevertheless, 
<laughs> we can eventually transcend the misery. Our material bodies are not fully spiritualized. And because of that, we carry particular burdens and karma. And sometimes, due to different karma, types of karma, we experience suffering. We might have karmic reaction chasing us that will later cause some disturbances, even if we've given up our previous sinful activities and now follow a religious lifestyle. But most importantly, the difficulties do not have to be negative, have a negative, do not have to have a negative effect on us. The challenges on the spiritual path can function as a catalyst to help us increase our meditation on Krishna or God. As we struggle and suffer we especially want to use the suffering as a means for growth and purification. When we're going through some suffering, it's a good time to ask, what can I learn from this experience? What is the growth here in this? Because as he said, started out, there's a reason, that suffering has a reason. Sometimes the devotee will suffer because the Lord is giving them mercy. What you talking about? Yeah. The Lord is giving us mercy sometimes when we suffer. Now the devotee, they might have to go through specific challenges that God sends in rapid succession. Why? So that we can overcome any obstacles and move on. We're not here to be stagnant in nonsense and, and even in the suffering. And as he's saying, as we struggle and suffer, we want to grow from that. And the Lord wants us to grow and get closer to Him. There are times in people's lives when they just have a series of difficulties. Actually, we can see it as a special blessing when the Supreme Lord sends us so many tests. If you're on the spiritual path and practicing this bhakti yoga and reading, please pay attention to what Bhakti Tirta Swami is bringing to us to help us grow spiritually, to help us advance, to help us understand who we are and our relationship with God and our connection and how He gives us His blessings and His mercy. Because I think we've read and shared some of his word that the spiritual path is not an easy path. But as we go through these sufferings and difficulties and tests, I remember in um, Spiritual Warrior 3, he mentions there again about challenges and tests. And the challenges are qualifying tests to see if we are serious about our spiritual life and our desire to go back to the kingdom of God. So if you can see it as special blessing when the Lord sends so many tests, he sees our sincerity in wanting to move faster towards the goal. Now some of us may say, wait a minute, I want to get to the goal, but slow down, I can't take any more of this. Well, I'm not ready for this. 
But if you're really sincere, and this is why hearing is so important. Maybe you might not have thought of it in quite this way, some of the difficulties you have, especially once you make a commitment that I'm on the spiritual path and I want to know who I am and my connection with the Lord and I want to serve the Lord. But he's saying this will happen and it's a blessing to see it as a blessing. And it's only because the Lord wants to see if you're sincere. Because why waste his time with nonsense if you just, what we used to say, chucking and jiving. I don't know, that must be old fashioned, but I know this must be a modern phrase for whimsical going back and forth. But when it comes to your spiritual life, it's serious. And you wanna be sincere. And you can be alerted to your sincerity by some of the difficulties that may be coming up and realize, oh, let me check myself out. But he sees our sincerity in wanting to move faster towards the goal. And what is that goal? We've talked about that also. What is the ultimate goal? Ultimate goal is love of God. So therefore, he, the Lord, he arranges events that can help us burn up negative karma from the past and move forward faster. That's love, isn't that? Sometimes we're acting properly and it is this proper activity that is creating some of the challenges. It might appear to be suffering, but the Lord is letting it come upon us so that we can once and for all put it behind us. Sometimes the difficulties allow us to shine even more because once that load is off, we're not carrying it anymore. He states that God never says that if we serve him, we will not experience any difficulty. Or that our lives will unfold very expediently. But Krishna does say that his devotee shall never perish. Hmm. He lets us know that ultimately he will protect his devotee. If you read Bhagavad Gita, have been reading Bhagavad Gita, and hearing maybe classes on, on the internet of different sadhus and acharyas, that comes up. The Lord says his devotee will not hurt. He takes care of his devotee. He lets us know that ultimately he will protect the devotee and always receive their love and services. We are to exhibit tolerance with the understanding that every situation is a part of the devotional experience. We understand that we often grow the fastest from our challenges and suffering. When we are suffering, we really begin to think deeply about our lives. You notice some people, you know, may be out there playing and sense gratification. Something comes up in their lives that makes them stop. And they feel, you know, this is some challenge I have here. 
what some people will turn to God. They'll, I better go back to church or I better start praying again. It really makes a change, makes us think more deeply about our lives because with the soul inside, we instinctively know that we are eternal beings. So, it is often when we suffer the most that we cry out to the Lord. Oh God, huh? Sometimes, yes. In regards to suffering, some people become um, bitter mm -hmm. and cold. Mm -hmm even declare themselves as atheists mm -hmm. because of all the suffering. Mm -hmm. So what about the, those souls? Mm -hmm. Does that mean they're not sincere? Or mm -hmm. <laughs> They're sincere at the level of their consciousness. As we stated that what makes a person think that you're in this miserable place, the whole world is misery, that you're going to be enjoying all the time. doesn't work like that. He talks about that. We'll go on. Maybe you'll get it. If not, remind me. <clears throat> he mentioned some people, even atheists. But he says that we understand we often grow the fastest from our challenges and suffering. When we are suffering, we really begin to think about our lives. And it is when we're suffering the most we cry out to the Lord. Now, sometimes the Lord places us in a situation so that we cry out more and increase our ability to receive more. I think when I began this chapter, he mentions how some people question, it, there, there's that question of why does Krishna of God, who's controlling everything, allow his devotees to, to, to undergo many hardships? And that question, why should I go through austerity just to suffer? But this is why he states that suffering has a reason. And we're going to continue. It helps us to not take for granted what we do have. And it can make our love stronger if we do have a foundation of love. When we have faith and understanding, I've mentioned this before, he keeps bringing up this word understanding these will also get stronger your understanding comes from your study your experiences your you that's why we need a teacher and a guide who does understand to show us how at this moment this is what is needed for us to advance spiritual life means moving ahead spiritual life means selflessness not me 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 i want this for me and if it doesn't happen for me then there's no god or it's not god no we have to get the understanding and then we try to access more understanding so that we can go deeper and deeper in our understanding of who we are, who God is, our relationship with God, and how he endeavors to bring us closer to him. And that may entail what we call suffering. But God has many ways to make himself available, show his mercy, show the amazing power of his devotees in spite of what might appear to be obstacles his devotees become glorious because spiritual life doesn't mean just sitting twiddling your thumb and you know god's going to pour everything down on you and you're going to be remember the story of arjun in the bhagavad-gita 
Krishna was driving his chariot, he would sit on the bed with Krishna. Now, that's close to God. And yet he went through suffering in order to bring about the piousness that was supposed to have been at that time and to destroy the enemy, the, the demonic. We also have to be careful that we maintain our spiritual practices and avoid what could be determined to our spiritual lives. We have to be aware that Maya is waiting for us to weaken. She's enticing us to participate in her allurements. And as soon as we make that little step, the whole avenue of arrangements and complexity begin to come down on us. There's some questions. There is? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Brenda Lee asks, is it wrong to ask the Lord to end our suffering? I don't want to say it's wrong, but you need to know the reason. Remember what you just said, there's a reason. You ask the Lord to show you the reason. You ask the Lord to help you to grow through it. And he will reveal to you what that is. Because he has his way of letting us know. And it may mean going deeper in your spiritual life and your spiritual practices. It may mean hearing more about him. It may be starting to forgive others. Remember the, some of the things we've been through in these spiritual warrior books. It may mean managing your anger. It may mean overcoming anxiety. Remember the things we study. But the point is to understand whatever is happening, as he said, there's a reason. It is for your spiritual growth and advancement and getting closer to God because he's not going to give you more than you can bear. We just read, he says, you will not perish. But sometimes we don't grow. You, you notice if you have children or have seen a child, and they're near the stove or something, and we've heard this, you know, and you tell them, no, no, that's, don't do that, you'll hurt yourself, you'll burn yourself. And the minute you turn your back, and a child will do that, you've seen them. So you have to let them, you can't stop them if they refuse to listen when you tell them. But, and you're telling them because you love them. And you're there once they burn and they come to you, you take care of that, okay? So it's about asking him to help you to understand what you're going through and to help you to grow closer to him. And then you will, he will show you the way through. Because remember we're saying it's really to see if you're sincere. And that's why he said we have to look at our lives and where we are, okay? Another one? Okay. There's a comment, comment from Bhakti and Carol. What you said about people reaching out to Krishna during suffering, I was thinking I suffered but did not reach out because I kept thinking I could handle it myself mm -hmm. until it reached a point where I reali realized I couldn't do anything myself. Mm -hmm. Then I reached out to the Lord. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Yes. I recall your earlier, earlier questions, and I, you, you're coming along nicely. Thank you. Keep sharing those realizations. Thank you. He tells us now of our rightful claim. Because we... Okay, let me keep going. Because this is real. I, spiritual life, spiritual warriorship, we've gone through so many times. And it's to know, and you will see here, it's your rightful claim to be out of suffering and to be ready, preparing yourself. 
for going back to the spiritual world. There's a prayer in the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's one of my favorites. When I first read it, I said, oh, yeah, that's me. Hopefully it'll work that way. It's um, Bhagavatam 10, 14, 8. And it says this, My dear Lord, one who earnestly waits for you to bestow your causeless mercy upon him, all the while patiently suffering the reactions of his past misdeeds and offering you respectful obeisances with his heart, words, and body, is surely eligible for liberation, for it has become his rightful claim. Hmm? So it's explained that a person might be suffering intensely due to sins and karma from previous lives. This is why I'm suggesting you don't ask to take away the suffering, you ask for what is the lesson to be learned and how you can grow so that 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 karma can move out of your way and you can then move ahead. But the devotee should continually offering obeisances to the Lord and serving with dedication knowing that in time he or she will be freed from the reactions of improper activities. In time, the person will become eligible to inherit the kingdom of God. He says, my devotee never perishes but you must go through. How do you get your, your, your bachelor's degree, your PhD? You have to go through grade after grade, and some of it is suffering. I remember when I went back to college, and uh, I, somehow I ended, oh, I know, I was studying medical lab technology, so I had to get into the chemistry and the math and all of this. I had been away for such a long time. Suffering. But I prayed. I remember I, I used to study um, something called science of the mind. But somehow I also trusted God and I remember reading somewhere God is intelligence within and that's how I used to pray. God, you're the intelligence within me. Help me to learn this math <laughs> and this chemistry. Uh, but that was, that was a suffering time for me. But I, I used it as a growth process because I wanted to get that degree. I had a goal in mind. So if we as spiritual beings have a goal in mind, what is that goal? The ultimate goal is love of God. And we have to practice, have spiritual practice. And there will be, and we're being told very completely by Bhakti Tirta Swami throughout the book that we have to go through challenges. Remember um, when we were in Spiritual Warrior Two? those of us, I even pulled out the paper today. I was going through a particular challenge at that time, and what I do, I went to look up what my teacher had said about challenges because it was really painful and I was mm, quite saddened by it or upset. And he told us in um, Spiritual Warrior Two, the Lord does not go on vacation, neglect us or have favorites. He always deeply loves every soul and arranges challenges and adversities for each of us. The Lord arranges it because of his love so that we can 
realize we're in this material body and the material world is a miserable place and because of that we've gotten caught up and it, we're paying a price for that but we can get out of it there's a question there's a question okay. uh, Kamsa Hanta asks there are some family members in our family that they are suffering who are not devotees what is the best way to help them and give them Krishna at the same time? Well, the first thing, we have to be an example of how we're serving Krishna and how serving Krishna is helping us, how we're living our spiritual life, and how we move through our suffering and pain. I think as we move along, he tells us we have to be compassionate and tolerance and understanding because if you've noticed in this reading he mentions understanding is so important so as you studied as one has studied and heard from their teachers and have gone through there there's an understanding that as we just went through the whole thing on karma we don't know what that person's karma is that they may be going through at this time so all we can do is comfort them and as, as best as we can. If they're not amenable to hearing Krishna's name, Bhakti Tirtha Swami, when he fished us in, I didn't hear Krishna's name for months. I heard Godhead, I heard Supreme, but I was willing. So we have to be compassionate and caring and let that person know we really care for them as who they are for whatever they're going through and maybe encourage them to pray or um, read their Bible if they're not into what we're into there's so many verses in the scripture I used to uh, do that quite a bit um, just bring up verses from the Bible it says you won't suffer you that you won't perish I forgot I used to have some but yeah, it's our compassion and love and caring that can help that person, even if they don't want to accept the mantra at this time or Krishna's name. But they're also a soul. They're also part and parcel of God. They also have to go through their karmic. But if one shows them some love and compassion, they may, they will, their soul will hear and begin to make change. So it's really on us to be that loving. That's a spiritual warrior. That's a part of his, his qualities. Um, so we're talking here about how we can be free from the reactions. Free, everybody wants to be free from the reactions of improper activities. So he tells us, how does a son inherit the property of his father? If the father has a will and leaves his wealth to the son, then when he dies, the son gets the inheritance. But how does he get it? First, the father dies. He simply has, the son has to stay alive. And then when the father death, at his death, he will inherit the wealth. So if we remain alive, he's telling us, huh? active and pure in spiritual life it becomes our rightful claim to inherit the kingdom of God when we do experience some pain from karmic reaction we must never forget the karma factor when we experience some pain from karmic reactions we might develop doubt and fears according to the problem. We might perceive the spiritual path as insurmountable. However, by remaining fixed on the path of devotional service, it becomes the rightful claim 
to inherit the kingdom of God. Fixed. You know, for those who go to work and you have a particular job and a particular position, and you know in order to keep that job and get that salary, which is why you're working, you have to be fixed on what is needed in order to complete what your, your job is or the title you signed up for. So mm -hmm. spiritual life is just as important. If you want to stay on that job or get promoted, you're going to be fixed. You're going to go in on time. You're going to do it to the best of your ability. You may even do more. Because if you do more, you know you'll get another raise or salary. What about our spiritual life? But the ultimate goal is going back, that soul within, to go back home. But we have to be fixed in our everyday uh, spiritual practices. And then we get, as we mentioned, the mercy. Because the Supreme Lord has many different ways of glorifying his devotees, as well as ways of purifying them. He has so many arrangements to help us understand that the material world is problematic and full of misery. And I used to use that expression uh, that the Lord just wants me to remember that. Sometimes I would go through um, some physical, some physical discomforts, if you will. And um, I get through it somehow and I feel better and I'm out and feeling and how do you feel fantastic I'm great I'm really great at that and to me that's fine I am I feel good and it seems like when I reach a certain pitch and it's feeling good I don't know if something happens on a subtle level but bam another pain will hit or something else and my next expression was the Lord doesn't want me to get too comfortable in this material body and he brings me a reminder every now and then. Although these days, I don't know what he's got in mind because these reminders are coming faster and faster. But he has many arrangements. And again, it's really seriousness and sincerity in your spiritual life. There's but a he's, question. Okay, let me do. He has so many arrangements to help us understand the material world is problematic and full of misery. Even Jesus told this world is not our home. All bona fide religions will tell you that. Consequently, it increases our eagerness to become free of the misery. To say I'm sick and tired of this, how many times? But then you, you, you look for the way out. In the midst of all the difficult factors, Krishna tells us in the Bhagavad Gita, and he tells Arjun to say it, declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. So we, we, if you're studying and getting an understanding, when you see the suffering, it's not easy, it's not easy. But he started us out reminding us of the karmic factor that we may be carrying, not just something we didn't do right this lifetime, things we didn't do right past lifetime, because we've been going around many lifetimes. So the next section is the struggle will make us strong. But you have a question? Mm -hmm. All right. Brenda Lee asks, does suffering always purify us? If you use it, accept it as a purifying process and take the steps for continued purification. Because as we said in the beginning, sometimes the suffering can bring doubt about the Lord and our God and our lives or our working with him, 
and we turn to the opposite and we look for more sense gratification and we get angry at God and decide I'm going to never think of him again cause, and put ourselves in a pretty bad way. So it can, if you're on a higher level of consciousness, you design a greater connection with God and you're getting the understanding that suffering has a reason. If you're getting the understanding, as we have said, that God makes these arrangements to see if you're sincere and to help you go through the karmic uh, payment dues, if you will, that could maybe take m more lifetimes. But he's helping you now to go through it if you see it that way. So that's the purification process. What does it mean to be purified? Who asked that? <laughs> Let me, I'll get to that. What does it mean to be purified? It's interesting. I'm, my, I have a prayer I say during my chanting. It comes from um, a list of meditations we can use in our chanting process to try. And one is, Dear Lord, please purify my heart. And the other one, and I add that, is, and help me to be fixed in my devotional service to you. And when I say that prayer, it's interesting. I really feel I mean it. I want it to happen. And all I know as a part of the process towards that is to fortify myself because I don't know what that purification would be. Mm -hmm. And I want to be strong enough, courageous enough to take it mm -hmm. when it comes. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure our scriptures and even Guru Dave um, can break it down, but purifying means cleansing, getting rid of, again, all that karmic stuff that may be laying around for lifetimes, surrendering to the best of our ability to the Lord's care for us and asking how to grow through, because he's really purifying us through this suffering. I think it was mentioned. Um, but it's how to see it as a blessing to reach what we call the ultimate goal. This part, I think, is the title, The Struggle Will Make Us Strong. Huh? Sometimes, oh, he tells a story. Do you remember the story that I tell it about a man watching a, um, he found a cocoon of a butterfly? And he saw the caterpillar just trying to, it was turned into a butterfly and was beginning to break through the cocoon. And he was so compassionate, he didn't want, he looked like he was really suffering. Mm -hmm. So what did he do? He opened the cocoon so the butterfly could come out. But once it was open, he couldn't fly because he needed the struggle of getting out to strengthen the wings and whatever he needed for flying. So that's a wonderful example of the struggle to break open the cocoon helps a butterfly to develop the necessary muscles and dexterity to fly. And since the man interfered with the natural, natural process, it did not have the capability to fly. So our suffering is to help us get strong to fly. Sometimes suffering is literally an arrangement from God so that we can develop a certain strength, level of strength, which will then 
help us break through the modes of material nature. In some cases, the suffering is specifically meant to help us develop deeper levels of consciousness. There's a reason for everything. It will help us deepen our cries and prayers through the process of introspection. So go inside. What am I thinking? What am I feeling? What has been my words? What has been my action? If we do not have the growing pains, we might not go through the normal process of maturation and growth. Under these circumstances, it may seem that God leaves us alone and lets us suffer, when in fact, he is doing the exact opposite. He might be allowing us to develop the necessary intensity of consciousness that comes from the learning experience, every experience. There's one more story before I close. I think I, I may have told this, but it's just, again, an example. Um, the story of when uh, a ship uh, went down and had many travelers on it. One man was able to swim, and he was able to swim to to an island nearby. And at that time, he was quite happy and felt he was fortunate to be alive, and that he, you know, he felt sorry for his fellow passengers. But he was alone on that island. He had to find shelter. He had to find ways to survive. And it went on for quite some time till he began to feel that maybe he wasn't so fortunate and maybe he should have drowned. So one day he was out um, looking for food and he saw some smoke um, in the direction of where he had built his hut and he went running to see what it was and when he got there his hut was on fire. So he was ready to commit suicide. It was like what? I, you know, I, even my house is gone, and uh, he 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 was really disturbed, frustrated. He was stunned, and he was really on the verge of cursing God, and you know, really thinking, of, "Let me just kill myself," because what's the point? But. At this stage, he looked out on the water and he saw a ship coming in his direction. He was stunned. He thought he was hallucinating or that he had completely gone mad. But as he watched, it came closer and closer and docked and the captain stepped off and walked to him and he was all choked up. You know, how did you find me? You, 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 you came to rescue me. I've been here. I'm going crazy here. How did you know I was here? And the captain replied, I saw from far away your smoke signal. Hmm? The man began to cry in great joy. The man's faith in God was restored. Because he had lost, when he saw that fire burning, this house just the end. How could God do this to me? And how often do we use that phrase when something really painful at the moment? How could God do this to me? Where is he? What is he? But if you study, you might again take time and look, you will see the whole picture. So the man's faith in God was restored and he realized that the Lord does things in his own time because 
He knows what is best for everyone. Who was that? There was used to be a television show, Father Knows Best. Um, but this Father, the Supreme Father, we are his parts and parcels. He sees the whole picture. He knows inside, outside of everything, everybody. So he knows what is best and how to bring about, especially when we sort of slack off a little. What Dad used to do, huh? Bring you home. Where were you last night? So the Lord, he knows what's best for everyone. In his own case, the Lord allowed his hut to catch fire at the exact time when the ship sailed by. Hmm? This story provides another way of understanding suffering. Sometimes we suffer because we do not or cannot see the bigger picture. We are impatient with different situations in our lives. And we forget that the Lord will make arrangements for our well-being at the most auspicious time. Hmm? And we must be patient. Patience is important. So, he goes on, this is the end of the chapter. Shil Prabhupada had, and many great saints went through all of these seemingly challenging experiences to show us how to remain steady in spite of all kinds of adversities. However, it should not let us doubt the Lord. Rather, we should pers persevere and expect God's mercy as our rightful inheritance. We just have to follow through on our promise to serve him and the Lord will follow through on his I have a question Hare Krishna he said um, we should expect the Lord's mercy how do we know when it's the Lord's mercy You don't, but you accept it and see what you're learning from the experience. And truly, you will know it is if you go through that experience without cursing, damning, and knowing there's a reason for it, that you want spiritual growth and everything that comes for your spiritual growth. And as you, when you move through that experience, usually I hear it. That was the Lord's mercy. I didn't see it at the beginning, but look at the outcome. Hmm? You know. But you must move through it. And know that it, you are desiring, as he said, be eager to know, to grow spiritually. We can gain our rightful inheritance as we endure some of the fallout from our previous karmic activities. Endure some of the fallout. Hmm? So it's not jumping up and down right at the moment. How could you do this? What are you doing? Endure. Ask how you can grow. See what's going on in that. Because as he said, we don't see the whole picture. And we get caught up in that little moment. But this is why we're hearing. This is why we, 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 we have the, the, the sastra. This is why we hear from the acharyas. And if we listen and imbibe what we hear and begin to practice in our lives, then when these things come up, as he says, we can gain our rightful inheritance as we endure some of the fallout 
from our previous karmic activity. As these reactions are gradually burned up and fully extinguished, we will become fully God conscious. We don't want to slow down. We want to speed up. We should pray to the Supreme. And here's a prayer. Uh, if you can remember it, write it down, or I'll start next week's class. But this is a prayer that can help you speed up and push behind you this. This is it. Quotes. Whenever I need to experience, whenever I, whatever, whatever I need to experience to come to you faster. This is to the Lord you're talking. Please let those things happen so that I can once and for all be free. That's a courageous spiritual warrior. And whatever is interfering with my spiritual life that I need to have taken away, please remove it from my life. For so many lifetimes, I have functioned on my intelligence and it has only brought me to another body in the material world. I know what I want, but you, Lord, know what I need. Mm. Therefore, I place myself before you and ask you to arrange whatever I know. I guess we would say an amen to that. Huh? Amen. <laughs> So this is Bhaktivedanta Swami, Chapter Two, Spiritual Warrior Six. Why do we suffer? I hope this has been helpful. I hope you'll think on this, work with these concepts, ideas. This wonderful, and hopefully you remember some of that prayer. Be courageous. Try to med meditate on it. And next week, what we'll do, we'll go through the questions and answers. I found the questions quite dynamic, and maybe you all, may, it may fit some of you all, before we go to the next chapter, which would, should be absolutely fantastic. So don't forget, if you can possibly get the Spiritual Voice 6 through Krishna.com, try so, um, any questions or comments before we close? Brenda Lee says, this reminded me I need to be more tolerant. Oh, thank you. She says, thank you. This reminded me I need to be more tolerant. Okay, Brenda. And you'll get an opportunity every day to practice. Just remember, when the moment comes, you can control that moment. Oh, you ready? And then you realize, oh, I want to be more tolerant. And see how you move through that situation. Help the situation. Help yourself grow. And help if there's another person involved. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else? No? Okay. Anybody else came on, we know, or Sam? Um, Bhakti Carol says, and every day we get an opportunity to practice. That's right. Every single day. That's how much the Lord loves us. And this is why, as we said, he, he doesn't take a vacation. Every situation has a reason. That I'm here sharing from his book. You're there listening. It's what's needed at this time in all of our consciousness to help us to grow stronger spiritual warriors 
knowing who we are as eternal beings and knowing that we are servants of the Lord and to help us help others. So go out on that battlefield, spiritual warriors, and help others with your understanding and see how the Lord's mercy manifests in your life. And next week you can share with me. So, Hare Krishna, thank you for coming.